Welcome to Elevate Your Events, your favorite podcast for transforming fundraising events. Join us weekly for expert tips and creative ideas to make your next event a standout success. In this episode, get ready to transform your fundraising game because today's episode is all about millennials and creating events tailored specifically to their desires and passions. But how do you effectively connect with this tech-savvy, socially conscious generation? That's what we're here to explore. Joining us today is a powerhouse team from Hambit, Jeff Porter, the visionary founder and CEO of Hambit, Elise Nigabauer, client services manager, and last but certainly not least, we have Matt Riley, our QA manager extraordinaire, who just happens to be a millennial. Enjoy. All right. Well, welcome back to the Elevate Your Event podcast, where we talk about all the various ways you can make your next fundraising event better. And I have some special friends in the studio with me today to talk about a fun topic. We'll get into the topic here in a second, but let's introduce our uh, cast here, (laughs) starting with Matt Riley, local millennial. He's our token millennial. <laughs> we haven't Andrew, even I talked believe. about the topic yet. And oh, you guys are we'll, we'll get there. Oh. God, you guys are spoilers. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh well. Okay. And who else is joining Matt Riley? <laughs> and then I'm Elise Neugebauer, and I am not a millennial. Yeah, she's our token Gen Xer. <laughs> no, no, Zennial. <laughs> okay. Elise group. <laughs> Elise wants to define her own generation. There you go. She doesn't want to be she call me a Matt Riley. I don't want to be labeled. <laughs> We're big in labeling people these days, especially with the generation. You know, like, honestly, growing up, did you guys know what generation you were in? Yeah, I, did. I, did. I didn't. I, I mean, honestly, who talks about, like, I'm like in eighth grade saying I'm a Gen Xer. No, I never. Oh, like, I love that stuff. It's just kids your age. No, the University yeah. of Wisconsin would put out a study every year, and it was so interesting. <laughs> Well, some of us in eighth grade were doing other things besides reading university studies. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Nerd over here. Next to me. Hey. All right. So. Well, we are obviously here talking about generations, but yeah, specifically one generation, um, although there are seven that have been defined. <laughs> Do you know what they are, Matt? This oh, is like man. a little on the spot thing. No, probably not. Uh, I know mine. <laughs> Well, there's the greatest generation and that went to 1924, and then the silent generation went to 1945. That my dad's in that one, um, and then we have our baby boomers. Everybody's heard of them, yes. right? That was 46 to 64, and Gen X 65 to 80, and I am smack in the middle of that one. And then after that, we have the millennials. millennials. Yeah. <laughs> so we put out an APB in our office. <laughs> Do we have a millennial available? Only one. This <laughs> only no. one raised his hand. Most eligible bachelor. <laughs> and he is here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are a company full of Gen Xers, but we have <laughs> one token millennial yeah. that is stuck with us. And so Matt is gracious to, you know, to join us today. Cause we're going to talk about your generation, Matt. Can't wait. Okay. And then we have Gen Z, which is where most of my kids lie. Actually, all of my kids looking at these 97 to 2012. And then, God, they're getting really creative with these names. We ended at Z. So what will we go with next? Alpha. I think we're starting (laughs) over again. I think they're going to figure out that, I don't know, by the time we get back around to X, maybe they've come up with some new names. I don't know. (laughs) They're easy to remember. They go in order. (laughs) Generation Alpha, 2013 to 2025. I guess these generations don't really become... Like official, I guess, until they you, you turn to adulthood, right? And then you're in the workforce. So the millennials, obviously, in 81 to 96, were not born at the millennia, but they became adults at the millennia, okay? So the oldest one here, look at this, would be, what, 43 years old or so? Yeah, up there. Up there. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Are we going to keep him on here? <laughs> A lot of millennial jokes today, everybody. As you can tell, the millennials in our office love to offend us. <laughs> <laughs> with their youth and their energy. Oh, yeah. All right. Why are we so, talking about millennials? Well, I, I think what's important, right, we've discussed in the past, is really understanding what generations of types of folks are coming to your fundraising events and what they're looking for and how that's changed over the years. Because we like to hear this, right? We hear this 
all the time in sales. My donors are older. <laughs> okay? Yes. And so I'm assuming if you're saying that your donors are probably boomers at this point That's because right. the silent generation <laughs> Maybe is Maybe a few largely, of those stragglers <laughs> in the silent. I would say the Bring silent the generation, phones. including my dad, is likely in bed by about seven or eight o'clock <laughs> <laughs> and not going to your fundraiser. But um, maybe you do have some that are boomers, and so you know how they grew up, what they're comfortable with in terms of technology or the types of events or the types of themes. Like probably like a rave is not something I would do if most <laughs> of my, not. my generation coming to the yeah. event were boomers. And I feel I like they might want to sit down more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? maybe. Converse more, sit down, take yeah. it easy, maybe catch a, up maybe with Maybe a Great Gatsby theme or something. Yeah, but yeah, millennials, on the other <laughs> hand, would be asking you, is the Great Gatsby, is that the book I read when I was Was I age? forced to read that in high school? <laughs> or no, I don't no, no. They would it. say, is that that Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> Yeah, that's movie? right, that's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I remember that movie. It's a good one. <laughs> Whereas they'd be all over like a Nintendo theme or whatnot. Oh, yeah. Although, it's so funny because, you know, my kids even joke with me when they go to like there's any sort of event that's 80s theme. Like, oh, yeah. So their high school was big in the themes Never for basketball games. Theme, <laughs> Dad, it's 80s. Can I look in your closet? I'm like, you really <laughs> think I still have 80s clothes in my closet? <laughs> your dad is not that nerdy, okay? <laughs> or uncool, right? So anyway. So, and also the millennials are the largest group now with 72.2 yeah. million people. In the United States. In the United States. So this is the second and larger baby boom is what you're saying. Yeah, there's only 68.6 million baby boomers left. So. Oh, yeah. Whoa. So, <laughs> they are. Taking the so throne by are, force. They the Gen are Xers. We're the over. smallest one, aren't we? Out, looks, of this, yeah. out of these three, aren't yeah. we? No, the yeah. golden generation was like 0. 0.6. The golden generation. <laughs> there's a hey, reason there's for that, there. Matt. We're not here to talk about Circle of Life. So anyway, <laughs> millennials, 72.2 million, okay? Yeah. But... A large number of them donate. That's what we're here to talk about. Oh, yeah. About. That's right. Okay. They're an important so, Yeah, I would say, look, group. honestly, 10, 15 years ago, when they were in their 20s and 30s, for the most part, the, old, the older portion of that, they were still kind of climbing the corporate ladder, maybe not the ones that were going to show up and write big checks at your event. And so you were catering to the, I would say, the people that were in their 40s and 50s, which back then would have been boomers for the most part and then followed by some gen xers and then the millennials are coming up and the first thing going through your head is these are the people i hire at the lowest rung of the ladder in my organization <laughs> right. and so i'm not expecting that demographic to have money yet well now these people are in their 40s on the upper scale of, so they definitely have money and there's yeah. a lot of them to your yes. point and a lot of them donate how many what percentage donate about 84% huge. so that's a huge amount yeah. yes that's crazy imagine getting 84% of the people at your event donating that'd be huge too yeah. <laughs> that would be i agree with you yeah. i'd like that 84% of, yeah exactly 100% of them you know <laughs> yeah. that, that that come in the door have the opportunity to but yeah. i mean we as we know participation rates aren't aren't near that so that would be amazing for sure yeah that's great and then also one other little interesting fact is that they donate across several organizations so they don't just choose one and have it as their favorite they want to support you know 3 to 5 um, and really be involved with those that's good yeah. A lot of causes to it's be great. passionate about. There are. Want to yeah, maybe the one wealth. of them will be yours. Yeah. So they're coming to your event. And so the question is, is that how do I cater to them? Because now um, they can't be the generation you ignore. They're going to probably be the, I would say, the majority of the population there. That's right. Yeah. So what do we got to do? So um, should we, you know, throw a, an old big band 20s era gala sit oh, down we, ten thousand dollar table <laughs> stuff oh my gosh we paper bid sheets <laughs> we love old school ways paper bid sheets yes no, no probably heck not. no so matt come on you got to help us out here matt you're the, <laughs> you're the millennial in here so if you're going to a fundraiser like wh what kind of experience do you want what kind of you know theme or sure. you know what kind of event in general well it all starts with the invite how am i getting invited to the event you know snail mail great works 
historically nowadays i'm on my phone i haven't checked my mailbox in two weeks guys uh so you haven't checked the handed one either by the way (laughs) yeah exactly see my point proven don't send mail anymore millennials are looking at their phones they're looking at their emails they're looking at their texts they're getting invites directly to them that's how you engage them to invite them to your event you got to get them there that's a Yes. Great step in. Okay, so we're talking digital invites. Yeah. All right. All right. Maybe a digital RSVP type system. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, use technology. Use it. Okay. Um, for theming, you got to do something fun. The gala is out, people. I'm sorry. No. It was. <laughs> it was mentioned in a previous episode, 41. Episode 41. Ditch the gala, guys. It sucks. Well, I let the gala evolve <laughs> into something. But so the traditional gala, I would agree, is probably not going to cater to the younger generations, and you know, different. Everybody audience. under Gen X is a younger generation than me. <laughs> so you know, the younger generations are probably looking for something different, a little bit maybe more. Or, interactive. Know, interactive. Yeah. I mean, they want to move around. Yeah. They don't want to sit at a table. Yeah. And, and you want to have chicken. fun, right? <laughs> yeah. I want to do stuff. I want to play games. I want to spend money trying to win a nice wine or whiskey. I, I don't want to sit chatting for six hours. I'm sorry. Yeah. I love everybody, but I can't do it. <laughs> I know. Matt's a little bit of an introvert too. So, <laughs> so you walk in the door and you're looking for things that are going to engage yeah. this crowd. Okay. Yeah. And so, how do I participate and have fun? Well, everybody wants to have fun. <laughs> right. It's just a different and generation to find fun. fun differently. Now. How do you have fun at events? Photo booths are big. That's Ooh. you know, I like those the, ones that spin around. Oh yeah, a photo booth that spins around. <laughs> yeah, yeah those that makes me sound like dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're great. Oh, the <laughs> camera spins. You don't spin. <laughs> oh, okay. You don't have to track the camera as it goes okay. around. <laughs> I have not seen those. We have a photo booth set, set up with Hambit, and everywhere we take it, I would agree it's Big very head. popular. I highly Big suggest head. you check out the 360. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need to invest in that. Get some but more of that millennials also, in the door. What about posting on social media? That's right. Uh, a lot of the ways you can spread the message to your friends, your millennial friends, is through social media. Check out this great event that I'm going to. Check out this event I went to last year, and you should come with me. So much easier nowadays with the the likes of social media, texting, uh, short form content like TikTok or Reels. If you're into that kind of thing, you can post that. The 360 photo what? booth. The 360 <laughs> photo booth. But so what? But what I'm gathering there. So let's just back up for a second because we've got some folks that are event planners sure. or planning an event for a charity that are going to be listening to this podcast. So you're describing how you want to consume that information or how you want to invite your friends. Right. Right. So it sounds like what I'm hearing is we need, or we as the event planners, right? We need to have like templates and stuff that we can also share with you so that you can use those to share with others. So like, sure. well, that's great. a great idea. Yeah. So here's an Instagram this background yeah. in your post. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, so that's something I think can be definitely helpful and you got to feel comfortable with it. And I think a lot of times what we do as event planners is we just do it the way we're comfortable with. So if you're a boomer or a Gen Xer like me, (laughs) you're probably going to invite others just like you would invite yourself, right? Right. Um, So you might need to find some millennials to put on your committee. (laughs) That's right. That might be great. And, you know, that brings up another point is that millennials do want to give back. They want to be involved. They want to do something besides just give money. Mm -hmm. So I think inviting them to be on your committee might really fulfill that need for them. Yeah. Do the work. Don't just give the money. That's right. We want to, I promise. (laughs) There's no doubt in my mind, Elise, that millennials have feelings and they definitely have opinions on things. (laughs) (laughs) They might be happy to share them. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yes, they need lots of tender, loving care. So to keep that in mind at your event, that you need to also be able to provide them with something that's going to draw their interest. So, okay, so, so we've kind of bounced around a little bit on this, but so in terms of inviting people, use technology, Provide social media templates if you can that people can use. Um, give them even pre-recorded reels or other things that they can turn around and just forward or share. Right? Turn them into your champions. Yeah. yeah, let them spread your message. Maybe even like create like what are those little things called like the Snapchat stickers or whatever, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. I asked my yeah, kids. I don't know the little about animated that. stickers you can throw know. in the corner. Yeah, don't, I am not a Snapchatter, <laughs> but I think that's what they're called. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Get, get some of those, like try that out for size. Um, anyway, all of that stuff's good. Okay, so um, the underlying theme here, though, is we're talking about technology. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you're sitting here and you're thinking to yourself, I want to save money at my event, 
I'm not going to use technology because I don't have the budget for it. How's that going to go over with your millennials? Common faux pas there. Yeah. <laughs> False pass for those who don't know. Yeah. So, you know, we, we even touched on it earlier. Oh, you know, my older generation's not going to get it. They're not going to understand. Well, you can do the opposite and trust that your millennials will get it and will understand. Scan this QR code, download the app, and get started. That's all they need sometimes. And then they can get going and rolling and donating and participating, and, and you're off to the races, and that's, you yeah. know, not much handholding. No, I think it's a good point, and and so what you're disc- you know what you're describing there is is that yes, that you're going to have some people there that are not comfortable with technology, but if millennials are eighty four percent of the population these days, or at least they whatever it was, like they're going to be a large number of people at your event. You definitely want to cater to them, and then you want to provide whatever support you need for. Exactly the older generation that may be struggling a little bit with technology. And there's ways around that. Of course. For sure. You know, um, so in terms of buying your ticket, checking in, I mean, this is a generation that grew up, you know, with technology, maybe maybe not necessarily always the internet for for some of the older folks, (laughs) but I mean, they grew up with a personal computer in the house, most likely. I had a cell phone in my hand at <clears> eight. You know, <laughs> so, okay. you're at the younger end of the yeah. millennial generation because so some of them getting did worse, not folks. have kids are getting fi- phones at five now. So. Yeah. yeah, not mine, by <laughs> yeah. the way. But anyway, um, so they're used though. They can show up with a ticket on their phone. Sure, right, right, and oh, they yeah. can, you know, they're comfortable scanning that ticket right. or they're expecting something that easy, that smooth. And they're comfortable figuring it out on their own. I'm just going to swipe around. I'm going to tap around. And then they get used to it right. and they get involved. It's great. Low tech anxiety. That's what I that's, like to call it. Okay. I, I, agree I like that. that. I wouldn't say that. that it's tech know-how to your point. Right. But I remember I was driving in the car. We had just launched the Hambit app. This is oh, 2011. Man. Okay. And I'm driving in the car. And so my son would have been like 10. Okay. Um, Because he turned 11 later in the year. So he's 10 years old. And my sister in law calls me up and she is like upper end of the, you know, Gen X range or whatever. And she's complaining she can't figure this app out. Okay. (laughs) And my son's in the back seat and he's just swiping through items in this handbit auction. And I said, Well, Jake, how'd you figure that out? He goes, I just swiped. (laughs) And so I, I said to her, I said, Well, my 10-year-old son has figured this out. <laughs> and I'm not here to say that you should know this, but I'm just saying that, like, you know, there's just generations who just are, are willing to take chances. Like, you have those types of generations that look at their phone and they're, like, afraid to touch it. Like, they're afraid that if they swipe <laughs> the wrong way. something. Yes, yeah. or all well, their personal information oh, no. is going to be sent <laughs> somewhere, right? Whereas, like, others are like, I don't know, let me just try this. I'll swipe this way and see what happens, right? So... What would I get you call that? that? Low tech anxiety? Low tech anxiety. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Someone quote that. Makes a that. lot of sense. <laughs> yes. Like so, so millennials have low tech anxiety, so you can try stuff with them and you're not going to frustrate them um, you know, by putting something technology-wise in right. it. Okay. So we're talking ticketing, automatic registration. These people are more than willing to check themselves in at the airport. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. For sure. Okay. Um, check themselves out at the grocery store. See, that's, that's the funny thing, right? Like I went with my mother-in-law once to the grocery store and she does not want to use self-checkout. Okay. <laughs> I've heard of that. Does not. Okay. I mean, she's like, I can't figure that thing out. <laughs> I, you know. Scan and pay. Well, and would you even go as far as saying maybe they don't want that interaction? So they, maybe they want to bypass check-in. They just want to go in and have fun. They're used yeah. to, at the airport, they just, you Here's know, scan pass. their thing. Here's my ticket. Let me in. I, yeah. I'm a hundred percent. Like when we think about where things are going at events, we talked about this in episode 41 that right. we think it's going more into, this is going to sound kind of like, I don't know, like <laughs> unsexy or uncool, but like it's going towards this self service type of model. Mm-hmm. Okay. People want to just kind of do it themselves. Like let them walk in the door, L- like maybe not get their own drink. Maybe you should police that, but <laughs> <laughs> millennials might like that too, yeah. though. <laughs> Those I know, bartenders are cool. I don't want to wrap a hole on that. I've seen the self-serving bar things at, at Mile High Stadium for concerts, oh, yeah. and I've seen the line as like there's a 200 person line for the for a robot to make my drink. No, thank you. So make it yeah. easy, but support. But anyway, so right. outside of that, like I mean, my point is, is that like I think they're going to be comfortable sure. with 
Oh, for those sure. Other things. Like they're, you know what? Let me walk in the door. Let me check myself in. Let me grab my own paddle number. Let me, you know, go to the bar and grab a drink, right? And let me bid for my phone. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And and the thought that these things cost more, they really don't, because what you're doing is you're driving engagement, mm -hmm. and we all know that when you engage millennials, they donate. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. And they might encourage their friends to donate on social media. Right. You're right. <laughs> and I'll so. tell you this: sometimes I donate to organizations that my friends believe in that even I might not, just because it's my friend. So Aww, you're such a generous person. <laughs> we love guy. you so much in here. Oh <laughs> <laughs> so what about other aspects besides tech? So when you're at an event, what Ooh. what appeals I to like you? I like this. We we kind of mentioned themes a little bit earlier, yeah. but something important is whose party is it? Is it uh, recognition for the board? Is it celebrating their accomplishments? Or is it for the donors? Is it for both? What does that look like? So when I go into an event, I do want to be treated specially, but I don't want to just hear hours and hours of board successes and people who are in their offices and uh, really not doing the groundwork. They're just executives that have gotten there and participated, but I'm the one who's donating. I'm the one who's at, out there building houses. So whose party is it? Is it right. for me or is it for the board? That's an interesting yeah. point. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not saying we see a lot of this, no, right, no. where people come in there and they want to just kind of toot their own horn. But, you know, you do want to provide some sort of connection between money and impact, right? So, like, exactly. I think millennials want to see if I'm going to give you 100 bucks, where is it going? Is yes. it going? Yes. Is it going to next year's award ceremony? Or is it I just going pay for a plaque feed, or do I pay for a feed mailbox? The orphans, yeah. right? <laughs> so anyway, I hear yes. what you're saying, right? Yeah. I mean, let's and so let's let's make the programs more about where the money's going yes. and the impact. Let's shorten the awards. Yes. Right. We want to be directly impactful for the causes we're passionate about. And right. maybe that's why we have so many different causes that we donate to is because I like this section of this organization and this section of this organization. So absolutely. Yeah. I yeah, look. We should all be doing that. Yes. yes. Right? Okay. So thank you for the millennial generation for pointing <laughs> yeah. out that we should be focusing, you know, what we're talking about at our event mm -hmm. based on a connection between, you know, the, the money being raised and the impact we're making. It's like Correct. ROI. It's a concept of ROI, which is saying, I want to see a return on my investment. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to know that if I'm giving you this money, you guys are using it to further whatever program services you have said that you need to go do in order to solve the problem Correct. that we mutually agree needs to be solved. Okay. So a hundred percent makes sense. Okay. Um, okay. So we've talked about the program. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but we kind of bounced over this concept of like kind of what the format was. And so I want to come back to that because I think originally what we were talking about was a lot of tech, but we weren't saying, and you said it needed to be interactive. When I get yes. it, you want to play some games, and I said you yeah. wanted to, like, you know, win a bottle of wine or something. <laughs> That's fine. But, <laughs> but at more the to same it than time, that. like, you're not looking for that traditional gala where I walk in the door, I check in, I stand in a long line, I check in, I get my paddle number, and stand then I go browse the auction area <laughs> while I get my drink, and then the glasses ding, and I go into the ballroom, and I <laughs> right. sit for two hours, right? Right. right? That's what you're saying you don't want. Oh, my gosh, no. <laughs> okay. So we're talking food stations. Yeah, where I get to roam around. Trucks, that'd be cool. Food, yeah, well, they're the Those same as fun. food stations. So, sure, sure. Sure. so food stations, food trucks. Where I get to roam around. I get to grab a bite if I'm interested. I can kind of you know chit chat with my friends. I'm not kind of stuck in the ballroom, right? Yep. Okay. Um, I so guess that it sounds like movement's important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Be on your feet. You wanna, freedom. Yeah. Yes. Like to me, it's it. What I'm hearing out of your your mouth, Matt, is freedom. <laughs> I I want yes. to have some flexibility in on what I'm doing throughout the event. Now the question is, is now how do I get your attention? <laughs> right. When I want to talk to you about all the amazing things that we're doing. Exactly. Well, first thing. Get an auctioneer if you're doing a live event. They are very good at collecting attention from people. <laughs> Second thing is, you know, be be aware of everything that's going on. Just because you're on your phone or talking to friends or playing games, be aware of why you're there. You're not there as a, for a party necessarily. You're there to give to the cause you're passionate well, about. Well, I think maybe we need to remind them, <laughs> that, right? I mean, and I'm not saying like in, in, a, in an obtrusive way, right. but like, you know, hey, look, it's always good to remind people what the purpose of the event is. Correct. Right? 
for beforehand, yes. when they arrive, during the event. Right. Maybe the auctioneer does that. Mm-hmm. We were at one event recently, and I thought, like, I was like, it was bold. Like, and, like you know us in Hampton, we love bold. It was really bold. He's like, and I'm, it's going to rhyme, and it's going to sound cheesy. But he's like, the theme was gold, and he goes, the theme tonight is gold because we are coming after your gold. Right? Like, <laughs> he wanted to be very bold. He's like, I'm going to be upfront about this. This is why we're here. We are here because they showed a video, sure. and it was about kind of what this, this charity was doing and kind of the impact they were having in the community. And he said, this happens because of what we're about to do next. Sure. Right. Yeah. And so he starts to get really blunt and upfront. And I think in the past, I've seen that really get watered down because I think different generations understand their purpose differently. Right. And I think sure. for millennials, I think millennials need to hear it square, well, I like think, yeah. right yeah, between I, the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes I we think do. that goes back to just valuing that transparency. Yes. Don't, don't lie. I right. mean, don't sugarcoat it. Straightforward. Right. Yeah. And really we're perceptive. We, yeah. we know you're asking for money. That's why we're here. We know just, you, you know, you can tell us straight up. We're here to yes. raise money for this cause. Yeah. And look, we know like millennials have a cause driven mindset. They're looking to, for a cause to support, right? Yeah. You and I talked about that before. Yeah. And so it could be yours. Right. But if you don't tell them what your cause is about and you don't ask them to participate, Just give in us it, money, please. Well, I mean, I think the way to say it is, is I think you go in there and you say, look, this is what we're about. Mm-hmm. Right. And your participation is important to us and it, mm-hmm. and it helps us. And here's the way that it helps us. And here's what we are going to do with your dollars. And now we need yes. you to, to step up in a meaningful way to help us. Like, I mean, I think you've got to be with millennials. I think the messaging has to be direct. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I don't think they're going to be offended by that. I think if you went to, you know, a 75 year old guest and said, I want your gold. (laughs) (laughs) It might be different. They might might walk out. (laughs) But, and I'm not saying you have to say exactly like that to millennials, but I think millennials are, are, are going to be used to being, you know, having that be a little bit more blunt, which I think would be good. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. What about like, um, I mean, we touched on this a little bit, but the just what's going to make you want to give? So, I mean, do you want to hear like a board member up there just talking about stuff or do you want to maybe hear from a a child where all of a sudden they have money for lunches or they have lunch provided for them or, you know, something that tugs at your heartstrings? Of course. Uh, it's, it's across the board. Of course, I'd like to hear board members discuss how they got to that point, but the focus isn't on the board. It's the cause, right? Right. So if I'm at an event where the children are the focused, I do want to hear the children. Absolutely. Because I want to hear them say, last year, we raised $1,000 per kid and we were able to do X, Y, and Z. This year, our goal is now... X, Y, and Z. So it gives me much more motivation personally. I can't speak for every millennial, but let's just pretend I'm speaking on behalf of them, um, that I'm much more motivated to hear directly from the cause. And it all ties back into the same things, the transparency, the directness, Mm -hmm. where the money is going. So yes, of course, I want to hear a a good spread. Uh, And I I also want to feel included. I want everyone to feel included. (laughs) I I don't want, you know, a big sponsor. Of course, big sponsors are great. Please sponsor your local charities. Um, But I don't want to be considered lesser than someone who maybe is donating $10,000 only because I can donate $1,000. I want everyone to be recognized as a special donor. Yeah, I mean, look, everybody yeah. walking in the room should be recognized as a special donor because everybody should be giving meaningfully f- to them, right? And Correct. as you yeah. know, that, that that's different for different people, okay? Right. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you don't recognize your sponsors. It doesn't mean that you don't go right. ask for that. That's not what I'm saying. Don't ignore your sponsor. Yeah, you title sponsor but, <laughs> but you do need to make your donors feel special. Right. Yeah, and we All look, I've them. been to events <laughs> where you can see like the demarcation line of <laughs> like these are the people that gave me a lot of money and these are right. the people that didn't. And it's like, look, at a concert, like it's fine. Like sure. you've got VIP seating and Makes you've sense. got general admission and all that other kind of stuff. But you know, in in other cases, like I don't know. I to me it, it doesn't it's not helpful to your point, right? right. It's just not helpful. I right. mean, I think the way to, to you there's ways to set that up of where course. people feel like, you know, they're not, you know, 
And if I feel special, I give more and I give more often. That's right. <laughs> so exactly right. So, someone gives a nice hug for donating, then I think I'll do Aww. it again. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely ways to handle that, and and mm-hmm. so, but 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 point taken, right? You don't want to sure. feel like a second class citizen at right? an event, and and look, we. We're the types of folks that would tell you that everybody should be giving in a meaningful way, and so you can't really judge that. To somebody, $1,000 right. is a lot. To yeah. other people, $1,000 is like pocket money. Right. Right. So important point, definitely for sure. Um, okay, so talking about going, – going back to this theme, I want, I, I want to come back to that because we said traditional gala isn't really where it's at. Interactive – we said food, let yeah. people kind of roam around. Yeah. Uh, maybe there's ways to also connect them with the organization in that way. So yes. like maybe there's ways to like some of them it's really easy. Like Habitat, Habitat for Humanity. They're a great like, example. Go build a house. <laughs> yes. But but maybe there are other ways that don't have to be the traditional gala where you can engage with millennials. Like maybe if you know you run a disabled adult day program, maybe you get them to come yes. in and volunteer. Yes. Right. Hands-on experience, really good, really rewarding, especially if you like doing that kind of stuff. Um, we've worked several events where we – it doesn't end at the event, right? Like we will still volunteer our time, our talents if available uh, to organizations. So it's not just the give me money aspect. It's not the how do we directly support outside of doing something for them physically, tangibly. It's I'm going to show up and I'm going to be there for them. And I think that's really valuable. I agree, yeah. man. I tell you what, and, like, and it may not be something that's part of your existing program services, right? right? You know, maybe it's something where you know you're, you know, you're you're providing like you know advocacy, you know, or you're running a clinic or a research group mm-hmm. at a hospital for you know disease research, and you're thinking like. Well, how in the heck can I have millennials help with that? Well, create something that allows them to connect with your yes. constituents, what, you mm-hmm. know, some way. Right? right. It might be just an event. I can tell you, I think a lot. How can I help? How can I do more? And I'm sure I'm not the only one. So you guys, the event organizers, need to figure out ways. How can I get my audience involved outside of just going to events? How can they help me in a day-to-day life? Yeah, I agree. I, think, I mean, look, that makes sense to me. Okay. Well, Absolutely. And I think another thing that um, millennials can do and that they really enjoy is when their workplace supports that. Yes. So, um, you know, again, Habitat for Humanity, they'll have a corporation come and give a day back. Um, and so I think talking, speaking out to organizations or maybe people who are listening to this, if you're an employer, take a day and give back. Um, yes. It means because, the world. Yeah. Or really if you're a charity, support. talk to different employers right. exactly. about creating a like a philanthropy or a give day, mm-hmm. right? Where the employees can come in and participate. Yeah. yeah. And make it memorable. Yep. You always want it to be memorable. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> We're cleaning up the Make beach. Make it boring and, uh, and unmemorable. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to clean up the beach at 3 a.m. <laughs> well, that'd be memorable. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. You'd be tired. <laughs> but I, yeah. I, instead of the word memorable, I think you need to make Meaningful. it impactful. Yeah, that's probably a better way to say it. Right. So, and I've seen this too. Like, I was at an event where they did clean water and they yes. filled these faces on the tables with dirty water okay and they were like like no no one was gonna like it was i think it was still healthy dirty water but the point was is no one wants to drink brown water but this looked like brown nasty like river water right okay and I, think, I don't know what they put in it to make it look like that but it wasn't dirt by the way but anyway i thought that was Im- impressive and then they came around with clean water jugs and put them on the tables Right, and then they they just told people like the dirty water is actually like healthy and clean. It's just we just made it look nasty. <laughs> but the whole point was is like no one wanted to drink that, and they're like, "This is what our, this is what we're doing." Right, right. Like that to me was impactful. Like okay. you know what I'm saying? And it's like we're all yeah. sitting at the table like, should we drink this water? Like should we right. taste it? Like I mean, <laughs> sends a message. Yeah. So. Would you drink the water? <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's funny because it almost kind of leads into the next point of uh, emphasizing sustainability and social responsibility. Uh, millennials nowadays care a lot, uh, and they care about their future and other people's future. 
kind of a lot. <laughs> so uh, also leaning into that aspect. Nothing is better to save the environment, Matt, than mobile bidding over power. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> There's no trees involved. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> you know how many trees we've saved at hand? Oh, I mean, it's countless numbers of we have, trees. Have we calculated that? Yeah. Well, I won't tell you that I get a real Christmas tree every year. I'm sure that's probably unsustainable, but we recycle it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, when it's anything from using paper and plastic cups uh, and tossing those out for reusable, sustainable plastics. It's like the little things. It's the small, tiny things that you really wouldn't think At about. your event. Yes. Well, and it's not just there. It's also... It's everywhere. Like, how you get there and how, right. you, how they park and... Have a shuttle. Get a party bus. Do something cool. Do something fun with your friends. Get you in the mood to donate. Wow, look at you with all these ideas. <laughs> Maybe event could be your Matt, Matt could be al- your Along with <laughs> Matt's volunteer planner. help folks comes his budget to yes, provide that's right. for all of those things. <laughs> his millennial wallet that's is right. available to you guys. <laughs> he will supply the party bus. Just apparently let, the, let the natural <laughs> gas driven party bus, right? Uh, Tesla party bus. Oh, like <laughs> electric party bus. I love it. We'll okay. do a Tesla semi. There you go. <laughs> So, no, it's, we joke around, but it, I think it is important. And I think people notice that stuff. Yes. You know, they notice the waste. They notice kind of, I mean, and it's funny. We should just do an entire podcast episode on, like, <laughs> environmentally friendly events. Right. I mean, oh, it's... Oh, we should, yeah. look, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a big recycler. I really oh, yeah. am. I have zero desire to know where that <laughs> recycling goes when they pick it up in the truck. I'm just, I just think I'm saving the ocean when I do it. And so don't tell me like every time I talk to my friends, like, well, you know where that can is going to end up anyway. Right. I'm like, I don't want to, I just know I'm putting, I just want to do my part, right? Like, <laughs> I'm going to put it in the recycling bin. And I think in a lot of times at these events, it's the same thing. It's just the message you're sending. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, depending on what you're using at the event yeah. and kind of. People you know, notice. They do. When things like if you're trying to help starving kids, right. do you have a lot of food waste Don't at the end of your event? Right? <laughs> I mean, just things that. There's food waste. Uh, there's the cups. I mean, right. so now I, this one concert venue in Denver that we go to, they've got these recycle cups. And so when you're served a drink in these cups, they have like these recycle me all over them and there's special bins all yeah, over yeah. the venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these cups are so expensive. The company comes through and digs through all the trash <laughs> and pulls out the ones that are tossed. And I asked this guy once, I said, well, how many are tossed? And he said, unfortunately, more than you would expect. And I was like, well, I'm looking at this cup and it says recycle me on it. So like that, that right. type of message I think is positive, right? I'm, sure. if I'm, mm-hmm. a, I'm not a millennial. <laughs> if I were, I would, I'm I would appreciate it. that. Yes. I would say, yeah. I like this organization. Yeah. They're recycling. They yep. care. Yeah. It, it's just you know? another, like they care. Right. I love it. Okay. And then, you know, we can talk about all the other things that I think millennials would look at even digitally, like accessibility, yeah. Correct. You know, I mean, we take a lot of our ability to, to browse the web or mobile devices for granted. And at Hambit, we have put a lot of effort into accessibility. And it was there was nothing more impressive and more pleasing to me than a, one event when a blind kid got up on stage and donated through the Hambit app. Wow. wow. And it was awesome, right? Because he's sitting there and he's just listening to it as he swipes and donating. And he's like, it's this easy, you guys, as he's doing it. And I'm thinking, that's that, incredible. That is amazing. Fun. Yeah. And that, I think, energized the crowd as well. Oh, for yes. sure. Get the crowd on might, your side. You know, it <laughs> might support the go, giving back or the social responsibility as right. well. Right. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, we've talked a lot about yes. your generation, yes. Matt. I know. That's probably the most I've ever talked about. You've hung in there the entire time. You haven't asked for a break. You haven't like... And I'm normally <laughs> used to like I five think, minutes yeah. and then I got to take a 10 minute break. I know. I think he enjoyed it a little. He's probably going to go to the chiropractor when this is over, you guys. Oh my gosh. You have Get no a idea. rub down. <laughs> oh my God. The millennial jokes yes. just flow out of my... <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. We I love know. your generation. Yep. We do appreciate um, everything that in that generation in terms of their generosity. Of and I'm telling you, in all seriousness, this is the giving generation. They also say that Gen Z is going to be equally as giving. Yep. Um, so prepare for that. But they're just coming into the workforce. So we've got a little bit of time there. But uh, but the millennials are here. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, we said, what did we say? Water your millennials so they'll 
grow, grow and into bloom a flower. and become a, a fully fledged awesome donor to your causes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We're going to end it with that. Water, Water your, your millennials. millennials. <laughs> Sounds like the name of this next podcast episode. <laughs> Oh, all right well let's wrap this one up thank you guys for uh, listening in as we talk about all the various ways you can make your next fundraising event better with millennials so again thank you matt thank you elise yes. until next time happy fundraising bye guys bye thank you for joining us today as we delved into the exciting world of engaging millennials in fundraising we've learned how to appeal to this generous and engaged demographic by creating interactive immersive experiences that speak directly to their desire for authenticity convenience and impact now, armed with these insights, it's time to go out there and create unforgettable events that inspire and engage millennials. If you enjoyed our show, please take a moment to leave us a review. You can find us on Apple, Google, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe for more great content. And if you're a fan of video, check us out on YouTube. Until next time, happy fundraising. Happy fundraising.